In the year 1985, I gave my life to Christ as my Lord and Savior. In 1999, at the age of 18, I accepted my calling into the gospel ministry. My story does not have to be your story. Your story is not my story. I gave my story because I'm the product of a grandfather who raised me in the church. My grandfather was a steward in the Methodist church and a Sunday school teacher up until the day he died. I am who I am today because godly values were instilled into my life. Beloved, the truth of the matter is, ours is a faith that has brought us not some of the way, but all of the way. Our ancestors survived all that they survived because of their faith. Can I tell you something? Their faith was not merely to make them shout or make them feel good. But beloved, in fields, their faith gave them hope. Dealing with cruel taskmasters, their faith gave them hope. Even being beaten and raped and killed, their faith gave them hope that a better day was on the rise. Beloved, let me say today, as a race of people, we have went away from that which has brought us this far. God has been good to us. We're no longer traveling on left and right. We have cars. We're no longer living in shotgun houses, three and four to a room. We have so many rooms now, we can't even live in them. God has been good to us. But as a result, it seems like we've forgotten about him. What drives us? What motivates us? What do we value? Can I submit to you today, beloved, that as a race of people, we have to get back to valuing our faith. It is our faith that keeps us. It's our faith that gives us hope. And I wanna to submit to you today once again that if the plight of black America is going to change, we have to get back to our first love, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, I love you. I'm praying for you. And please know the joy of the Lord is your strength. Take care.